Hello, and welcome to the ProjectWise Administrator Advanced Accreditation Course on Advanced Workflows. In this group of lessons, we are learning how to configure advanced workflows using an Excel workbook. In the previous video, we discovered workflow rules workbook fundamentals, including operation types, rules, and settings. In this video, we will learn how to translate a process diagram into a set of workflow rules. In the next lesson group, we will implement the workflow rules workbook configuration into ProjectWise. For our project, the project team has given us a process diagram to show the proposed workflow. Our task is to transform the process into rules in the workflow rules engine workbook. How do we do this? Well, we use the business requirements and the process diagram to identify operations, rules, and settings. From the process diagram, we will configure the appropriate operations on the operations types worksheet. Based on the process diagram legend, we start by filling in menu labels. Next, we pick IDs for each menu option. We will use these later in the rules worksheet. For each operation type, we then populate the prompt, module, callback, and state callback columns. Finally, we order our menu items using the menu order column. At this point, we have our operations types but we need to add each operation type to the appropriate workflows. In this case, we will add advanced design workflow in the workflow headers, then enable both operation types for the workflow. When editing the rules worksheet, the following general steps are taken. Format worksheet with borders and rotated text, List all rules for workflow, add actions, then add conditions. To begin, start with a template or manually format the cells with borders. Also, rotate the text rows 1 through 5 so that the columns can be narrow. Next, determine how many rules you have for the workflow. The number of rules will be the number of states times the number of operations. In this case, we have two operations that we defined on the operations types worksheet, approve and revise. Previously, we defined four states in ProjectWise Administrator for the advanced design workflow. Work in progress, pending approval, approved, and obsolete. Four states times two operations gives us a total of eight possible rules. We enter the workflow name and the state names verbatim from ProjectWise Administrator and the operation type IDs from the operation types worksheet. Referring to the process diagram, we see that only five of the eight rules are applicable. Showing the rules in the worksheet that are not applicable is optional, but it's useful, so you know that the situations are possible. Using manual or conditional formatting, distinguish the rules that are applicable versus those that are not. For each rule that applies, enter a prompt. The prompt will display as a yes or no dialog when the user initiates the rule from the ProjectWise interface. For the non-applicable rules, use the prompt column to convey to other spreadsheet users as to why the rule is not applicable. To finish the rules listing, add a unique ID for each rule. The next major step is to add actions for each applicable rule. First, list the actions needed for a rule. Then identify the syntax for each action 
by referencing the ProjectWise administrator help. Let's take two examples, rule number one and rule number two. Looking at the process diagram, we see that there is simply a state change to pending approval for rule number one. However, from the prototype, we know that certain attributes need to populate and clear as well. Let's list each action in simple terms. The first step is to set the trig submitted attribute to 1 to trigger the submitted by attributes. Hopping over to the attributes tab, we see that the trig submitted change triggers the submitted by update by using the stored procedure to fill in the current user's title block name. The submitted by change triggers the submitted by date by updating to the current date and time. For action two, we set trig rejected to zero so the reject revised attribute clears. Like the first action, the value change triggers other attributes. Let's hop over to the attributes tab. The trig rejected change triggers reject revised by to update by using a stored procedure to add a dash dash dash. The reject revised by change triggers the reject revised by date to update to the current date and time. Action 3 clears the rejected date. Action 4 clears the rejected comment. Action 5 will set the design status to 50. And the state will then change to pending approval. After looking at the ProjectWise administrator help, we find the correct syntax for each action. We then add the actions in the correct order to the rules worksheet. We repeat the same technique for rule number two. There are 10 actions needed for rule number two. Let's review each action in simple terms. The first step is to set the trig rejected attribute to the value of one, and this will trigger other attributes. Let's see the attributes tab. On the attributes tab, we notice that the trig rejected will then trigger the reject revised by by using a store procedure to fill in the current user's title block name. Next, the revised reject by change triggers the reject and revised by date, which updates to the current date and time. Action number two, the state change to obsolete. Action number three, a new version is created. Action number four, the state is changed back to work in progress. In action number five, we increment the rev with a minor revision. We will set the rev attribute to be tied to the version string later. Once we do, the version string will be updated whenever we update the rev attribute. Action six clears check by. For action seven, we set trig submitted to zero. On the attributes tab, the trig submitted change triggers submitted by to update by using the stored procedure to add the dash dash dash. That change triggers the submitted by date to update to the current date and time. Action eight clears checked date. Action nine clears submitted date. And action 10 resets the value of design status back to zero. Finally, we hop into the rules spreadsheet and add the actions in the correct order to the worksheet. Once all the actions are in place, we give each action a unique ID. Now that we know how to add actions and identify them, let's fill in the other rules, add some conditional formatting, and align the actions. Step number four is add conditions. After a brief discussion with the project team, the BIM coordinator ascertained that rules number one, two, four, and six cannot occur if certain conditions are not met. To approve a work in progress document, the title block attributes must be populated. Similarly, when a document is rejected, the reject reason needs to be populated. 
Let's look at an example. Let's look at rule number one. Like with actions, we list each condition in simple terms. There are eight attributes that need to be populated. Drawn by, designed by, checked by, scale, scale vertical, title one, revision note, and dot code. After looking at the ProjectWise administrator help, we find the correct syntax for each condition. We then add the conditions in the proper order to the rules worksheet. Next, we add the conditions for the other rules, two, four, and six. Finally, we give each condition a unique ID and can optionally apply conditional formatting for legibility. In the previous lesson, we learned that the settings tab contains several settings for the workflow rules engine. For our configuration, the most critical one is BNT Rev No ATTR Name. For a given data source, we must select one and only one attribute to tie to the version string. It is important to be consistent across multiple project wise environments with attribute definitions so they can all interact with the same settings. In this video, we learn how to translate a process diagram into a set of workflow rules. The next video will summarize what you've learned during this lesson group. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.